Paul Roberts. Conscious Counseling 101. Let's talk about the idea of whether it's worth it to live out in Timbuktu to get a better value on your house and um, commute to where you need to go to uh, make the living for that house. Uh, I spent about two months way out here in Timbuktu with my friend and uh, where we had to do things was 45 minutes away if there's no traffic, up to an hour and a half away or more if there is traffic. A lot of people are moving out here because you could buy more house, land's cheaper, but then they have to pay for the rest of their life or as long as they stay there <clears throat> to get where they need to go. Unless they decide to live a smaller life here and find a job here. <clears throat> My point of view is that if you know you're going to be needing to work somewhere and be somewhere, you have to factor in all the gas, all the costs of transportation, all the loss of your time. Oh my gosh, the loss of your time is amazing. The, the loss of your time is amazing. Um, we, when choosing where we are going to live, bought the most inexpensive place that we could buy that had everything we needed. And that meant that we had to do a lot of work to it because, you know, if everything's nice, it costs a lot more money. So, what we did was we decided we were going to live conveniently, close by. We gained at least an hour a day in the morning and at least an hour a day in the evening. We could do whatever we want with that two hours. <clears throat> I would recommend it. But there's people that do commutes and they put themselves to good use. They, they, those, those commutes a lot of times they listen to something on the radio that benefits them. They use it as downtime, leisure time, a way to get away from the grind and say, this is my time. I might just have to sit here and look where I'm going and be stuck in this vehicle for an hour each way. But it's mine and it's acceptable because I've got something better out of it. I remember my first job from college in Baltimore. I had to drive every day all the way almost to DC an hour a day, and it was always an hour, so it, it didn't go higher or less. It just always was the same. And I realized I didn't want that in my life, and I pulled the rug out from underneath myself before even a year had passed, and I left the job. Never went back to a full-time job after that, except for, well, I did have an illustration job. But uh, I tried to do um, freelance work. I tried to, to not work for the man. I tried to be independent. And I've had to do with less all this time. And by doing with less, what I've done is I have had to do more work. I filled in my time that would have been in the commuting stages to get something that was more finished with work. I filled it in. Well, consequently, what that work did was it inadvertently caused me to keep making what I had better and then I could sell it, move on, and transfer. So that's how it's become physical reality. I spent time renovating and improving the conditions of everywhere that I am. And sometimes I don't sell at the right time and I lose out. Sometimes I sell at the right time and I gain. But there was a chance, if all the factors worked out better, that it would have been a better gain. You know, I had a couple things, if you watch my other videos, work against me, like when the towers fell, I was holding the house, I was renovating. When the 2008 collapse happened, I had a number of houses that I was holding and working on. So, the things that could have worked out better didn't work out. But, there was a positive gain being made all that time when I could save that time of going in the car and put it to another use. So I've always been a fan of having less, having it where it needs to be, and having your time be your own to, for you to manage. And I've never worked for the man after that, and I don't intend to, because quite frankly, there's two reasons for that. One, the man's motives aren't necessarily 
worthy, at least in so much as I believe mine are. And if I give myself to him, whatever his motives are, is gonna be the thing that's bolstered. So I'm basically giving all that's good in me for a lesser person to use those traits. So in that way, I am somewhat of a slave. I choose not to do that. I don't wanna work for the man. I wanna be my own individual. And so by having less and always just getting by and making things work, I achieve those ends as, a, as an artist, as an entrepreneur, as a Renaissance man, as whatever I am, I achieve those ends. And so even if I don't sell at a higher price because of the work I've done, because I've caught at bad times, everything I do, I take with me. It keeps me doing things that are practical. It keeps me learning. It keeps me work, working with my hands. It keeps me having focus and a reason to, you know, balance my life affairs and manage how I view things. So in my physical life, I've been doing the same things I've been doing here in Conscious Counseling 101. I've been balancing and managing my affairs because I force myself to. If I just signed on and worked for the man and did a commute to a house that's better, that didn't need as much, farther away, I would have basically put a template over my life and I would have filled in all the areas of that template, but the template would have always constrained me. I'm not recommending that you just leave a job and have the freedoms that I have because most people wouldn't be content <laughs> struggling <laughs> and working hard and uh, trying to figure out what to do on a daily basis and managing all your affairs and trying to figure out, well, should I do more of this or more of that or should I do this or that? A lot of people will give in towards wrong decisions so that they can have something. And then there'll be a waste because they'll work towards something so they can have it and the attainment of that will take them away. If it's not a worthy endeavor, that's where you spent your time. And that could be a negative thing in a person's life. So one of the things that I've been able to do is avoid those struggles. Only thing I work towards is the development of myself, the raising of my family, keeping things healthy, balanced, and um, keeping our material possessions in check, taking care of them so that they keep a roof over our head and we can afford them. Even if we don't, and you know, oh, pride. Don't have any pride. Don't worry about whether your stuff's as good as the guy next to you or down the street or in that other place where you could have gotten a better thing. The fact that I wasn't concerned about getting a better thing, I recapitalize on all the things I would have given away in order to afford that without having means. I recapitalize on it. Take a look at all the things you can do by having less, but not just sitting there on the couch doing nothing. Have less, but have a facilitation of what you have allow you to build towards more. Like real estate, location, 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 right? We're always in a good place where there's good locations. And like I say, one of the things that's failed us is you start off having a higher buy-in, <clears throat> but there's still room to improve as long as that location still remains a location people wanna be at. <clears throat> So, what I'm getting at here is, if you put what you have towards what you're doing, if you set up a basis or a groundwork for self-management and use of your hands on a good foundation, you'll make a gain. I'd like to correlate it with a Jesus teaching. You'll use your talents rather than bury them in the ground. This can help you, but, if it ruins you, it wouldn't have been worth it. Some people that aren't gonna manage themselves and aren't gonna be good at the total freedom that I've got, trying to figure out, you know, the, the, the uh, analyst, the analyst that I have become <laughs> as an artist, I can be comfortable with having to consider everything and trying to find a, a way to make it make sense and manage it. The next person maybe can't. What I would recommend, if you find yourself in a place where you're in a template and there's no escape, you're in a box, I would recommend exercising 
the techniques and tools that I use with conscious counseling on a daily basis in my life while you're in that template. Develop yourself until you can step out of that template. While you're still in it, maybe you're developing yourself and your other things in your life. Before you step out of that template, don't leave the security. Make sure that everything you've got going on that's outside of that template is working on its own first. Then step outside of the template. That would be a recommendation I would make. If you've got any time left, and even in that commute, if you're driving to a faraway place because you got a better house, I would say don't look at the better house anymore as being a value. Look at the time that you could have spent if you had a less house. Look at the time in your commute as your most valuable time. Spend that time every single day considering conscious things. Have your growth come from that commute time, just like my growth comes from managing the extra time it gives me in my life of freedom. If you start to do that and you start to make conscious gains in managing everything that's within your capabilities, within the template that you have, working for the man, you may find that you can work outside that envelope at the same time. You may find eventually the scales will start to sway over to the side where the freedom will give you the ability to say, that's the better life. Now all I need is this other bunch of time that I'm wasting for the man. And if I apply it to what I've already got going, surely it will help me get all the way there. That's what I would do if you decide to live out in the boonies and you decide to commute all the way into where the action's happening every day. That's what I would do. Like right now I said, ugh, I don't wanna drive 45 minutes out here to my friend's house to help. Well, I do, I wanna help. <laughs> But I don't want to do it and not have anything happening. Now, I, I have lots of time as an artist while I think, while I work. So what I said was, okay, I'm going to make three videos. Now, maybe one of those videos will be just what one person is looking for. And a lot of people will skip by after they see, you know, this isn't really the content I'm looking for. That's fine. I wish I could find a way to make you see what I'm going to be saying before I say it. But if, I, if one person gains anything from one video or one video makes them motivated to see another video and they get a gain out of that if I keep on going and I keep on figuring out what can the things that I do in my life help others that aren't doing them how can they see a different perspective from a person that sees so many perspectives and operates in a fluid way on a daily basis and has for most of his life now that's one of the reasons why I'm doing these car talks on the way out to <laughs> where I could have gotten a better house and done less work on the house that I have. Helping my friend to have his facilitation of his house, which fortunately, he works out here. Give him the ability of what I'm saying now, if he wants to use it, to come home every day and work at his workstation and be productive and grow towards his ultimate goals of producing things and selling things and having an organized amount of items that is in his stock while he produces new items to sell and fully takes the items he has that still need to be worked on and liquidates them. If he could start to do this in a more efficient manner while he's in his home, while he lives here and doesn't have a commute, then what I do today will have served him. He's handicapped and he can't do it himself. So my goal is to give him the ability to have facility like I have. And my hope is he'll use it and it can help transform his life. All right, we're almost there gonna shut down the video. Paul Roberts Conscious Counseling 101. Hopefully there'll be some updates on this.